In this video, I'm going to show you how you can make your M blocks move about. Um, so I'm using a piece of software called mBlock, and the URL address for this is ide.mblock.cc. So once you go onto this um, website, you'll see this um, exemplar project here. So on the left, on the right hand side, I've got this colourful piece of code. I've got an image from, from space on, on the left hand side. This is just an example of what a project can look like. So the first thing you need to do is clear this. I'm going to go on to File. I'm going to click on New. So that will bring me a, a, a new project. Um, and as you can see, the code is gone and the image from space is also gone. First thing you need to do is you need to correct your device. And the way we do this, we go onto the Devices tab on the left side of the page. Currently we've got a CyberPy device link, that's just a default, we just need to click on the close button and click on delete to get a of CyberPy. And then we'll click on add and we'll add the M button. So by clicking the M button then clicking OK, the M button is then added. The next stage is connecting a device. So we've told the software what device you're going to be using. Next stage is we need to actually connect the device and the way we do this, usually we do it via Bluetooth. So we click on the connect button and then we select Bluetooth and then it'll scan and find the device. So make sure you, your robot is actually switched on and it's quite quite close to your, the device that you're going to be using. Um, so you can use this with an iPad, with a Chromebook, with a laptop, um, with almost any, any device. So connect that via Bluetooth. If you can't use Bluetooth for some reason, you then need to click on USB and connect that via the USB cable. But usually, uh, nine times out of ten, you'll be using Bluetooth, I would imagine. So once your device is connected, you're then ready to start coding. And the way that we start, every piece of code is with an event. So the event tells the ro robot when you want it to start doing something. Uh, and usually the one that we most often use is this block here, so when the flag is clicked. This means whenever I click on this green flag here, uh, the code is then sent through to the robot and the robot starts moving about. So this is the one that you want to select. When the flag is clicked, that's what you, you will use if you're using a Bluetooth connection. If you're not using a Bluetooth connection, if you're using an USB um, connection instead, Ask your teachers for guidance on how you will start. So the start of the code will be a little bit different. Um, but for this video, we're going to be using the when flag is clicked to start our code. Um, everything we're going to be looking at today comes from this dark blue section, which is the actions. And the actions is what makes your robot move. So these are basically lines of instruction. So we've got move forward for a particular amount of time, move backwards and left and right and so on. So all of these are lines of code. They are lines of instruction for your robot to follow. So if I want my robot to move forward for one second, I can drag that block and attach it onto our first block. Then if I want, want it to move backwards, I can drag and drop that. I want it to turn left and so on. So you can see this build one line after after um, after each other, and that is what we call a sequence. So the robot reads from the top down through to the bottom. So when the flag is clicked, the robot reads the first line, which is move forward for one second. Then it moves on to the second line, which is move backward for one second. And then it goes on to the third line, which is turn left for one second. And that is what we call a sequence. So a sequence essentially is just a, a series of instructions for your robot to follow. So everything you're going to need to uh, work your way through the next couple of challenges is in this dark blue section. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set you a challenge. And you're going to then work either as individuals uh, in a pair or in a group. And I want you to work together to solve the problem and complete the challenge. Um, so before you start working, you've got to make sure that your workspace is safe. So make sure you're not working in a high traffic area where there's going to be a lot of people walking about. What we don't want to do is trip anybody up um, as they work. 
So make sure your area is safe and secure. Make sure you don't drive the M bot or don't send it into a table or into the a a leg of a chair. So make sure the area is completely safe and secure. And after you've secured that, then you can start working through the challenges. So I'm going to set a challenge. Uh, I want you to pause the video as you work through the challenge and then click and play again, watch the second challenge, then pause. Uh, play again then, watch the third challenge and then click and pause once again. Um, so the first challenge I'm going to set to you, I want you to make the robot move away from you and then come back towards you. So once again I want the M bot to move away from you and then back towards you. Pause this video now. So I'm hoping that you had fun working through the first challenge. The challenge was to make the robot move away from you and then back towards you. And to complete this successfully, you would have had to drag two blocks from the action section, which is move forward and then move backwards. That means the robot will move away from you and then it'll move backwards uh, in the opposite direction and come back towards you. So that's all you need to do to complete the first challenge. Uh, the second challenge, I want you to make the robot move in three different directions. So once again, I want you to make the VM bot move in three different directions. So you can pause this video now. I hope you had fun working through the second challenge. So to make this robot move in three different directions, what you would have needed to do is either move forward or backward, then you would turn left, you can move forward or backward again, turn left, to so your left, tip your right, and then going to move forward again. So if you work your way through the sequence, I'm moving forward and turning, I'm moving forward and turning, and I'm moving forward again. So that means I'm moving in three different directions. Obviously there's different ways that you could have done this. You could have used backwards instead of forward. You could have used right instead of left. You could have used a mixture of right and left and so on. Um, but as long as uh, your robot's moving in three different directions, then you've completed the challenge. So we've got to move on to the last challenge now. And I want your M bot to move and turn. And I wanted to do that four times. So I want your robot to move and turn and do that four times. The extra challenge this time, I want one member of your group to explain to the other group what's going to happen. So I wanted to predict what your sequence will actually achieve. So that means I want you to explain what every line within your sequence actually means and what you think is going to happen in the end. That's the extra part of this challenge. So the challenge, once again, to move move and turn four times. So you can pause this video now. So I'm hoping that you had fun working your way through the third challenge. So the challenge was to make your robot move and turn four times. So the sequence of the code that you wanted to do this was move forward, it could be forward or backward. So move forward. Turn, move forward, turn, move forward, and turn. So you see the repeating that's going on here, move forward, and turn. So you can see that this pattern, um, it's got a lot of repetition in it. So it's moving forward and it's turning, then it's going through the same two again, and through the same two again, and again for the fourth time. There's lots of repeating going on in this pattern. So this sequence, to explain to your partner what was going to happen, it's exactly what I just did there. So I'm going to move forward for one second, then I'm going to turn left for one second. Then I'm moving forward again for one second, then turning left again, moving forward again, then turning left, moving forward and then turning left. So my prediction is that this robot is going to move, in, move forward and turn left. Um, four times, so it's going to move in four different directions. So, well done if you've completed the challenges, you're now ready to move on to the next video where we're going to be looking at loops.